Hello, my name is Fernando. I'm from Pixel Animation Studios. And today I'm gonna to talk about the discretization of differential operators on polygonal meshes. Our goal is to make geometry processing tools originally developed for triangle meshes available for polygonal meshes. And our motivation is quite straightforward. Many industries rely on polygons instead of triangles. This is true, for instance, at Pixar, where we use quadrumate meshes to define subdivision surface. More broadly, polygonal meshes can be found in any area based on geometric design. Even in engineering applications, polygons are often preferred because they do a better job in conforming to complex geometries. But you might be wondering, why not triangulating the polygons? Unfortunately, splitting the polygons into triangles introduces numerical artifacts, which manifest themselves in different ways. For example, let's say we have this hexagonal tiny of a torus. We can rematch the polygons by making the triangles as alone as possible, or we can apply this recent technique that uses an intermediate triangulation splitting the polygons with virtual nodes. Either way, computing coverage on these meshes produce drastically different results. This is because the polygons are not planar, and the choice of triangulation changes the shape inside the polygon, thus the curvature. Now, let's say we have a dense quad mesh generated through subdivision. Here, the quads are quite uniform, so we would expect similar results for any triangulation. Instead, these are the results for a conformal parameterization where the colors indicate the quasi-conform distortion. In this case, the issue is that we care about the distortion of the quads, not of the individual triangles. So using a triangulation is effectively over-constraining the computations. Due to these artifacts, numerical maps on polygonal meshes have received attention from many disciplines. Specifically from graphics, there have been some work dedicated to polygonal Laplaces. But they overlook all the other operators using geometry processing, like radiance, shape operate for curvatures, and so on. The mechanics community has also proposed several techniques. The closest to our work is the virtual element map, which extends finite elements to polygons by defining basis functions implicitly, hence the name virtual element. However, these maps are focused mostly on 2D flat meshes instead of curved surface. So in this work, we introduce a systematic construction of differential operators that is valid on surface meshes made of arbitrary 3D polygons. In this process, we will improve existing Laplacians by making them compatible with first-order derivatives. And at the same time, we will reproduce existing discretizations in the special case of triangle meshes. In practice, what we get is a way to apply geometry processing to polygonal meshes without modifying the specifics of any algorithm. At the core of our approach is the discretization of the co-gradient operator. The co-gradient is simply the cross product between the surface normal and the gradient vector. An important property of the co-gradient is that it obeys the Stokes theorem. This allows us to use a boundary integral, making our construction agnostic to the interior shape of the polygon. Discretize this boundary integral over a polygonal face F, we obtain an approximation of the co-gradient operator, which is exact for linear functions. Since a linear function has a constant gradient, we can also relate our boundary integral to the integral of the normal vector over the polygon, even though we have no knowledge about the surface filling the interior of the polygon. This integrated normal is a known quantity called the vector area, and it provides a well-defined notion of area and normal for any 3D polygon. By combining the co-gradient and the vector area, we define our discrete gradient as a matrix G that maps function values at vertices to a vector per face. More specifically, the discrete gradient applied to a function is evaluated as the average of the co-gradient of this function over the polygon rotated by the polygon norm. This leading to the simple expression where this term in highlight corresponds to the column of the matrix G associated with the vertex V. Note that by construction, our discrete gradient is exact on linear functions. And in fact, 
In the special case of triangles, our result is also equivalent to the gradient of linear basis functions, even though we made no use of basis functions in our derivation. There is, however, one important difference. Our matrix has a no space. And this may affect any computation related to the gradient because it may introduce spurious modes. In order to identify and quantify this no space, we will relate our discrete gradient with operators acting on one forms. One forms are an alternative way to encode tangent vector fields available in exterior calculus. Instead of storing a vector with two coordinates relative to a local frame, one forms provide a coordinate free representation that measures the circulation of this vector over the edges. In the case of a gradient vector, the circulation is simply the difference of vertex values. And we use the matrix D to denote the mapping from vertex values to the difference of values per edge over the face F. In the continuous setting, the mapping between vectors and one forms is defined via the music operators, flat and sharp. These operations are the inverse of each other, so no information is lost. However, the discretization of vectors at faces and one forms at edges breaks this bidirectional mapping. And to better understand this mismatch, let's discretize the music operators. The discrete sharp is a matrix U that maps one forms to a tangent vector per face. By mimicking this smooth setting, we assemble the sharp matrix by simply rearranging the terms from our gradient matrix, leading to this expression where C is the centroid of the face F. On the other hand, the discrete flat is another matrix V that maps a vector from a face to a one form local to that face. And each row of this matrix V returns the circulation of the vector evaluated at each edge of the face. And we can compute the circulation by projecting the tangent part of the vector into the edge vector. Notice that in one direction, our discrete music operator don't lose any information. In fact, starting from a tangent vector, if we apply flat and then sharp, we get back the same input vector. So the mismatch shows up when we revert the order of these operations. And we quantify this difference by introducing the projection operator. The projection is a matrix P defined per face that maps a one form to another one form inside the face. This matrix indicates the information lost by a one form when we extract the part of the one form associated with a vector. So consequently, we can use P to quantify the part of a function that has a zero gradient. Or in other words, P provides a closed form expression for the no space of our gradient matrix G. Geometrically, the matrix P measures how much information is off the polygon's plane and how much is not linear at all. Putting these pieces together, we can finally construct our Laplacian matrix compatible with our gradient. For the definition of the Dirich energy, we use the square norm of the one form, which expands into two terms. The first one, computing the square norm of the gradient of the function, and the second one, penalizing the no space. Note that we are penalizing these two terms equally. We arrange these terms, we obtain our La polygonal Laplace matrix, which contains in the middle an inner product matrix. which has this form defined by the sharp operator U and the projection operator P. Importantly, this matrix verifies all the basic properties expected from Laplacian. And in the special case of triangles, it reduced to the cotton Laplacian. Our result also shares some similarities with the polygonal Laplacian proposed by Alex and Verdesky. Even though the individual matrices are different, we were able to show that their expression is equal to ours plus an additional term related to the non-planarity of the poly. This term H is already accounted for by our projection matrix P. So the matrix from Alexei Verdesky is penalizing this term twice. In practice, we notice that our version of the Laplacian produces a slight improvement in accuracy when we solve post-solve equations. Another important difference is the fact that 
this previous inner product requires a singular value decomposition to assemble the matrix C, while our inner product is given in closed form. Our discretization also applies to operators on directional fields. In this case, we care about the direction of the vectors, but not about the norm of these vectors. For this reason, we need to account for the misalignment between tangent planes. And this can be done by discretizing the connection over a polygon. In our construction, we assign a tangent plane per vertex and per face of our polygonal mesh, and then we encode the discrete connection as the smallest rotation mapping normals from each vertex to each incident face. With a discrete connection, we can then collect the vectors u at the vertices of a face f and bring them to a common coordinate system defined at that face. And we indicate these rotated vectors by u superscript nabla. We can then discretize the covariant derivative over a polygon as an operator that applies the same gradient we saw before on each coordinate of these rotated vectors, thus returning a matrix per face. Similarly, we can also define a covariant projection operator that accounts for the no space introduced by the discrete covariant derivative. And with these terms combined, we obtain a Dirichi energy for vector fields, which leads to our vector Laplacian. To compute curvatures, we're going to look at the shape operator, which is defined as the gradient of surface normals. In this smooth setting, the shape operator has two important properties. First, it returns tangent vectors, as any gradient does. Secondly, it forms a self-adjoint operator, thus making the matrix symmetric. We enforce these properties in our discretization by defining the discrete shape operator as a matrix that maps normals at vertices to a matrix per face. And we assemble this matrix using this expression, where capital N indicates a matrix with all the normals of the vertices incident to the face F. Notice how in our construction, we are symmetrizing the gradient of the normals, thus making the shape operator also symmetric. And in, the, in these outside terms, we are making sure that the shape operator is orthogonal to the face normal. We can then extract principal curvatures and directions from the shape operator by computing its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, let's see some applications. We start with shape editing. Here we have a rest mesh with points X, and our goal is to blend this shape towards another pose. To do so, we set a Jacobian matrix J per face of the polygonal mesh. And this matrix indicates the amount of transformation that each face should receive. In this specific example, we compute J using our gradient apply on the point of the target pose, but we're going to do that only for the faces marked in red. For all the other faces, we set J to identity, so this face should not deform. We then compute the deformed points, which are called Y, by minimizing a slightly modified version of the Dirichlet energy that includes the matrix J on both terms. So in the first term, we are penalizing the tangential deformation inside each polygon, versus the second term where we are penalizing the deformation in, in the new space. So these are deformations of the plane of the polygon or nonlinear deformations. And this will avoid spurious loads. With our discrete operators, we can also compute nonlinear parameterization for polygonal meshes. This was not possible before with previous polygonal methods. Here we minimize any choice of a distortion function, psi, and we combine it with our projection term. So here's a result using the as read as possible distortion model to parameterize a quad mesh. And here's another example using this symmetric Dirichlet energy to parameterize hexagonal mesh. Let me point out that if we were to triangulate the polygons for, for these parameterizations, the evaluation of a distortion function and its derivatives would become more costly because there are more triangles than polygons. Just for reference, in the case of 
the as rigid as possible parameterization, the triangulated version took more than the double of the time required by the quad mesh version. Since we know how to create curvatures on polygons, we can also generate suggestive contours. The idea here is to multiply the shape operator with the camera direction, which returns the so-called radial curvature. Then we can extract contours by analyzing the gradient of these values. So for this application, we are combining the shape operator with our gradient. Grooming is another great example where we combine other operators we introduce in this work. Here we are computing a, a smooth groom by interpolating both the height and the orientation of each segment forming these handle curves indicated in blue. Therefore, we need a scalar and a vector Laplace all combined. Here's another uh, example showing the same interpolation uh, to groom feathers smoothly over a wing mesh. And here is easy, easier to see how these handles in blue are made of several segments, which allow us to create these bend shapes. We also consider other common geometric processing applications in our paper, including conformal mapping, line fields for texture synthesis, and the heat method. In particular for the heat method, let me say that a good rule of thumb is to set the diffusion time step using the largest polygon diameter instead of the mean edge length. This ensures that the diffusion connects any pair of vertices sharing a polygonal face. So in conclusion, we showed how to make geometry processing compatible with polygonal meshes by introducing polygon-based differential operators. This was possible because in our formulation is, is based on a new gradient, uh, which comes from a co-gradient, making our construction agnostic to the shape of any polygon or even any triangulation of the polygon. This gradient also comes with a notion of projection operator that will quantify uh, any new space, eliminate any spurious node. As future work, there are a couple of interesting directions to pursue. Since our discretization can be seen as an extension of the virtual element method to surface meshes uh, for the case of linear functions, one possibility is to generalize this construction even further by considering high order virtual elements. Another direction is the discretization of differential operators on polyhedral meshes. This would allow geometry processing on volumetric domains with meshes made of hexes or even coronoid like cells. Basically, any cell in 3D that may have non flat sides. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>